Here is a game played by one of my best students when he was a beginner, and I wanted to show it to you now because after so many years teaching privately, after over 200 lessons here on YouTube, I have gathered enough feedback to tell you what I think is the best opening for beginners. So of course, I'm going to show you everything you need to start playing it. I'm going to give you the five reasons why I think it's the best opening for beginners. And at the end, you're going to see me using it against some of the engines here on chess.com. With that said, let me tell you the five reasons why this is the best opening for beginners in my opinion. Number one, the best opening for beginners has to be easy to learn, easy to implement, no memorization, guys. Beginners should be playing to get to the middle game, look for tactics, attack the king, improve your vision of the board. Number two, beginners, many books and coaches are going to tell you the same thing. Beginners should start with e4, e5 openings. This is what's categorized as open games. They lead to open positions that are very tactical. And again, that's what beginners need to be exposed to. Tactics, learning how to attack. And the third element that we want in the best opening for beginners is it needs to follow, of course, the three principles of the opening. We need to be able to control the center, develop your minor pieces, and castle. That's why you see many beginners, the first opening they learn is the Italian game. In, a, in three moves, you're controlling the center, developing, and you're ready to castle, right? So that's another good opening as well. Now, the fourth reason why I like this opening so much is because it could be played against almost anything that the black pieces play. Like in this case, Alexis learned it just like you're going to against e5, right? So this is the Vienna with g3. But in this game that I'm going to show you, his opponent played c5. At the moment, they're both beginners. They don't know this is the Sicilian defense, but he kept it simple. He did stick to the ideas that we learned. This is now the closed Sicilian, but he's just using the same things from the Vienna with the Fianchetto. And then guys, the final reason is that the opening is simple to learn, but also the typical middle game plans. And this is an opening that you can carry in your repertoire to intermediate and even advanced. I remember not long ago, Richard Report played it in the, in the candidates and he won a very nice game. So anyways, let me start with the game that Alexis played, the way you get the essence of it and you learn the main plan. Then we're gonna come back. I'm going to teach you how to play if they choose to play with d5. It gets very tricky for black. There are some nice tactics and that way you have everything you need before we go on to play against the engines. Actually, let me just get this one out of the way, that way we can focus on the main plan afterwards. So guys, basically what we want in general, we want this knight, of course, on c3. This is the Vienna game of the Vienna opening. And the bishop goes into the Fianchetto. This knight goes to e2. It looks like they're both, well, they're actually both defending each other. And then once you get your pawn to d3, you're going to pick one plan or the other. Now, when we play with against this knight f6, they play this d5. We need to act quickly on that. So we're going to take, and then we place the bishop on this very nice diagonal. They take on c3. Of course, we need to take with the b pawn. Number one, there's a principle that says pawns should move from the edge towards the center. And of course, if we just take here now, they're going to leave our king in the center, not nice. So we take here, and soon after, you're going to realize the same thing we learned on lessons 41, 42, which is when we have isolated pawns or doubled pawns, we get the benefit of, of the semi-open file. So now you have the rook, you have the bishop attacking that pawn. And there are some interesting tactics here that, of course, beginners fall for all the time. For example, the first one is, uh, if they want to block the bishop and the rook from getting the pawn, knight c6 happens often. The knight goes anywhere to e2. There's no other knight, but this is where it belongs. And then after we castle, it's time to move the bishop. What could they do? Well, you might see many beginners playing b6. Knight is hanging. You might see beginners playing rook b8 first to defend. But then since these two are not connected, we're going to get the knight for free. If they take us, we get the rook. It is pinned. So b takes e6, we get the rook. Now, another tactic that I see often in beginner's games is that instead of castling, they go rook b8 quickly, 
we castle, and then you have bishop e6, for example, right? Well, this time, if we just take, they take back, queen is defending, not a big problem. But we could just take on b7 first, and then we pick up the knight, and we pick up the rook afterwards. So again, simple tactics that are always in the air. Now, if we go back to the game played by Alexis, we got knight c3, then g3, and after e5, it looks like we started with e4, e5, knight c3, and so on. So he was always in his elements, bishop g2, d3, and then knight g2, e2. Another cool thing about playing these systems is that the move order is not a big deal. If we play d3 first and then knight g2, e2, or knight g2, e2 first, it doesn't really matter, right? So knight f6, castle, castle, and now he played f4 right away. Now, when we were learning this in training, I always tell him to play h3 first. It's a prophylactic move, very useful, but again, it is completely up to them. And notice how the engine is saying f4 is the move. Now, the idea behind h3 is something that you're going to see later, but also um, we want to take care of this g4 square. Sometimes the knight jumps over, the bishop comes to g4, so that's why we play it before. But f4, d6, and then f5. Most of my students, when they choose to play this opening, is because I show them games with this plan. Potent Storm, f4, f5, many beginners playing as black, they simply don't know what to do, they get confused, very easy game. Now, of course, they could take you on f4, and the question is, how do we take back? Do we take with the bishop, with the pawn, with the knight, with the rook? Well, the way that I presented to my beginner students is, look, play online multiple games with the different variations, and then you see which one you like better. It's a matter of personal choice. However, if you have to pick one, I would just recommend for beginners, develop your last minor piece, play chess from this moment on. Later, on lesson number 91, we talked about uh, taking with the pawn, that way you get this nice center. Also, you could take with the knight, fighting for that d5 square. You could even take with the rook. Guys, you have to try it, and at least it gives you some freedom for you to choose your plan from this moment on. Going back, in the actual game, they played d6, f5, then rook b8. It makes sense to expand on the queen side, and then you see the move pawn to h3. Idea, g4, g5, and of course, you could have done it before, you could do it later, just know h3 is very useful, it's thematic, and these are the main ideas that my students know. They don't really know, they don't really memorize theory, they just remember the key moves, the key ideas. So b5 was played, attacking on the queen side, g4, then pawn to b4, and this is a little bit confusing because typically, we want to play g5 first, knight leaves, like let's say something like this, and then our knight lands on this beautiful square. However, in this game, black got to us first, and Alexis played knight to b1. It doesn't look like a great move, but look, it's the best move in this position. We talked about this on lesson 107, Karpovian style. And anyways, the knight is going to just reroute later to a better square. So knight b1, a5, and now we got g5, knight e8, and pawn to f6. Guys, this, believe it or not, he had seen it before. When he plays training games, like he's got into these positions before, he's aware of this trap because this is what he's been playing for a long time. And he also knows what's, what to do afterwards. The bishop is already trapped. That bishop, they could put it in their pocket. They could throw it away. It's like we're up a piece. So in their mind, they only need to continue to attack the king or simplify the game. If we simplify the game and we're left, let's say, with this bishop, well, it is this bishop that could go after the pawns and collect versus this bishop that is trapped doing nothing. So knight g3, trying to do h4, h5, bishop e6, h4, mistake. And even though it's a mistake, I like to see this move because it means my student or he has a plan, right? And it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, we need to have a plan. So d5, pawn takes, bishop takes, queen f3, another mistake, but he also has a plan. He's just simplifying the game. Knight d4, we have to go back to defend, then knight d6, bishop e3, knight f5, simplification, knight takes. Knight d2, he told me he didn't realize the, knight, the pawn was falling, but luckily he could 
do this keyword after get the pawn back. And now that's a very powerful rook. Also, from the Karpovian style lesson, we talked about how rooks are better in this position. Now, rook c8, easy decision here, simplification. Knight goes to c4, attacking the pawns, rook c5. The other knight, notice how we are using both our minor pieces. They're using only the knight because this bishop is just doing nothing. It's just blocked. So knight d6, knight b5, opportunity to trade, of course. Then knight e3, rook c2. And guys, at this point, the game is just too easy. So h6 was played. Forget about taking that pawn or the bishop gets activated. So knight e3, king f8. And after knight c4, the game is just over. The knight takes care of the pawns. Our king gets activated. We pass the pawn. And this game went on for many more moves. But I think this shows the essence of the opening, guys. Let me just go one more time from the beginning. And notice that all you need to know is up to here. Castle and that at. From here, you could play with f4. Or if they had b5, then you choose the other plan. Guys, the last thing I wanted to do is play a game against one of the engines here. Let me go to play computer and let's choose. And okay, this is beginner, intermediate. Let's play 850 now. Let's play a 1000 player, right? So I'm going to go choose that's intermediate, but let me hit play, then e4. And don't forget, I'm going to do the same thing. Knight c3, then pawn goes to g3. And I don't really care what they do unless they're putting pressure right away. So bishop g2. And I'm going fast because we already explained the opening. We know where the pieces belong. Pawn to d3. Now notice how it says Sicilian defense closed. But in my mind, I'm playing the same thing regardless of what they choose. Now bishop g4, remember h3. Well, I'm going to do it. I have to do it anyways. You could play f3 and make this bishop look really bad. You know what? Let's do that. f3. And now I'm going to play f4. The same move that I wasted with that pawn, like going moving moving it twice in a row, well, they moved it, they wasted it with that bishop going back and forth, right? So I played h f4, they played h6. Now I could do f5, but I'm going to play h3. Let's see if they castle. There you go. They castled. And now I'm going to play f5, making contact. Now look, the same plan that the black pieces played in the game that I just showed you, right? So they don't have much more to do. So let me play g4. Now they're going back. They are defending. Should I play knight f4? Should I take? Mm, I also like knight d5 h4 g5 is that too much <laughs> what to do what to do now i like knight f4 if they push i go to h5 yeah let me go with that just add more pressure i'm also looking at d5 yeah now i go over here attacking that bishop Hmm. now let me go look the same plan same plan that they played now let me chop off the bishop that's a very important piece defending let me go bishop e3. Now, bishop e3, the idea I need to develop, but also when I put the queen behind, I'm going to be putting pressure down this diagonal. So I'm thinking bishop e3, queen d2, and then h4 to just try to collect on h6. Simple, but it might, it might just work, right? And at the end of the day, I'm developing my pieces. So queen d2. I might even just sacrifice. Take, take, queen takes, king moves. Hmm. This is actually very, very interesting. Guys, something else. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a beginner, you're moving up the ladder. If you play energetically, you put pressure on your opponents. When you're a beginner, it's not easy to defend. So don't be afraid to attack, put pressure, sacrifice sometimes if you get a feeling that might lead to something. Because if you're playing someone advanced, they will know how to defend. But as a beginner... It's not so easy. Plus, these char positions that you get when you play aggressively are going to make you a better tactical player and your intuition is going to improve so much. So bishop g5, pawn takes, queen takes, king h8, queen h6, knight h7, g5. This has to be good for us. We're going to analyze it after anyways. 
but this has to be good for us. I did not calculate the whole thing, of course, but it just looks so good. G5, G6, even knight D5. Oops, sorry, knight D5. Okay, let me play G5. This pawn storm, again, is what got me into this opening, guys. So G6, the knight is pinned. I'm threatening checkmate. Oof, that's it. This is a beginner engine. This is a fork. Oops, sorry. This is a fork. And this is just checkmate. I know, we're playing a beginner engine. Maybe your opponents are not as bad as this engine. But guys, you get the idea. This is a very simple system for you to just get to the middle game with a plan. And of course, let me know in the comments how it goes when you try it. Good.